Welcome to Riot. Welcome to Radical Impartation of Truth. We have a special Easter edition for you today. And of course, we have our very own Anu Omidei. Thank you for having me. Welcome to the show. Thank you, as always. I woke up today and uh, the first thing I saw on the news was the bomb blast. You know, and, and what are your thoughts about this whole thing about terror? I think we need to just talk about it briefly today. It's, it's, it's extremely sad. Um, just to understand what's going on, yet another suicide bomber, we think, at this time. Um, yet another set of coordinated terror attacks, we're almost certain, have occurred. And it's not, it's not coincidental, I believe, that these attacks have taken place on Holy Week. You know, a week where we, we as Christians, recognise and celebrate the, the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I think we should throw it out there to you. What do you think is the proper response to terror? How should you respond as a Christian, as a community, as a family, as an individual? What can we do? That's something I've been asking for the last 10 years. I've personally experienced the impact of terror coming from just Battle State, seeing a lot of bloodshed. And in my own personal experience, in what Nigeria. I found out in Nigeria, yes. I found out that people either get very angry and react in the physical and the flesh, or they get afraid. Mm. And both responses I found is not constructive. And so in the last couple of years, we've been exploring how to respond to terror from a Christian perspective with biblical emphasis. And it would be good to hear from you what you think about the response to terror. What do you think is the best response to terror? This is a very difficult question because in terms of what the best response is, Christians will normally say, let's pray. We have to pray. We've got to pray. And that absolutely is correct. We have to um, take these situations to God in prayer because we as human beings, in some respects, we feel powerless mm. to do anything um, once these attacks have already happened. Mm. And as you say, the, a response is usually fear, fear or anger. So we're angry about what's occurred or we're just scared. We're scared to get on the tube. We're scared to sit next to a man who looks like he's an Asian mm -hmm. man or mm -hmm. a man who looks like he might belong to some extremist section of the Muslim faith. We're angry, you know. Then the issues such as immigration, etc., arise. We want these people out of our country and so on and so forth. Mm. It's very difficult to know what the best response is, but I would certainly say that a response is definitely prayer. But another response as we've been discussing, is actual action. I mean, we have to actively decide to be active in our communities, in the corridors of political power, and so on and so forth, so that we can be in strategic places to mm -hmm. actually make mm -hmm. decisions at levels which affect everybody that can assist in combating terror or and assist in educating or combating, you know, the countering, the ideology the words out of it. my mouth, the ideology, countering the ideology behind it, especially young people. I mean, mm. we've heard about the numbers of people that have gone to Syria from this country yep, yep. To, to wage war. But then we also heard about numbers that have actually returned. But some of those who've returned have been lost in the system. What, so it's, what it's interesting. Want? We're going to take a break now, but before we take the break, I just want to throw it to you. What do you think these terrorists want? Mm, you know? It's a good question. We're very grateful for this opportunity one more time at this beautiful studio, Icon Tower Studios. We thank God for Pastor Fred and the great work that he's doing. In this season of Easter, we just want to say that Jesus is the reason for the season. Wish you a happy Easter. He deserves all the glory. St. Pierre's Day.
Welcome back to Riot. Welcome back to Radical Impartation of Truth. Welcome back to our special Easter edition of Riot. We've been speaking before the break about the fact that um, terror has arisen on a global scale. Mm -hmm. And we're asking the question, what do they want? Well, Pastor, what do you think they want? I mean, you've experienced this. I think, I think that your story is, is really interesting because you've experienced this a long time ago. In, in a country which only recently people have begun to pay attention to the terror attacks in Nigeria, mm. really because of Boko Haram and the 300 um, mm. young girls that went missing. But before that, we weren't given, Nigerians were not given as much attention in terms of the suffering under terrorist attacks as mm. other countries were. Mm. But you have, have experienced attacks in, in Joss and so on. Yes. And, and what do you think? I know we can't have a, a broad brush approach to what every single terrorist wants. But from your experiences, what do you think? I think they have been quite um, articulate about what they want. And it's interesting that ISIL, ISIS, Boko Haram, whatever you call them, all want the same thing. It's as if there's an agenda. Bottom line, they want the Muslim Umar to rule. They want to govern. They, they don't just want a state. They want to take over the world. That's the truth. They want our lifestyles to conform to what they believe is the right way to live. And do you say that this is that these are extreme Muslims, or do you say that it's it's a lot wider than that? They are criminals. Right. They are arsonists. They rape. They kill. They murder. I don't really care what religion they call themselves because that's not the issue. Right. I think we should call it what it is. I've been speaking on, on media for a while on this matter and we call it religious, we call it, initially they were calling it uh, tribal unrest and all sorts of names. But these people kill, they steal, they rape. So they're criminals. I agree. That's what we should call them. They yeah, only use the agree. religious front. Even the Muslims, they are the first victims of this ideology. Mm. They are willing to kill even the so-called Muslims. And that's why many of them are afraid. I have friends and I have people I've lived with who, when they own up, you realize that they are victims as well. Yeah. So basically what they want to do is they want to take over. And when we realize that what they want is to take over everything and have their way, you realize that the option is not just anger. Mm. The option is not fair. If people want to take over your lifestyle, you can't give in to them. Yes. So in thinking or speaking about the narrative around terror, we have to realize that we need to confront that ideology, ideology with a counter ideology. If these people want, from a biblical perspective, I say God has not given us a spirit of fear. Right. They always want us to be afraid. Mm. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So we need to have a sound strategy. We need to have love. And then we need to walk actually in the power of God. If you know that people are about to blow you up, you cannot be afraid to live as God has called you to live. I believe in prayers, like you said earlier on. One of the things I think we can do is to pray some more. Pray on the tube. Right. Pray on the tra train. Yep. When you are going to walk, pray. But you see, but that's, that's not just prayers. Just one. Because I think prayers are exceedingly important, but we know that faith without works is dead. Yep. So we have to pray, but we also have to take the prayers where they're needed. So not just in our four walls, but as you said. Strategy. On tubes, exactly. Being strategic about what we do. On tube, in tube stations, why not? Why not intercede? We don't have to necessarily make noise about it, but why not be in a position where you're covering the country in prayer and saying, Lord, you know, we, Brussels is just down the road. France is just down the road. We know that there have been several, several um, attempts at terror, recent attempts, Every city country. is prone to, to, to terror exactly attacks. That. And whether we like it or not, we had this discussion earlier on in the studio. Yeah. And um, you did not like the sound of what I said. That well, it's it only was, a it matter just, of time. It's just the way and it's the truth. It. And yeah. I'll say it again on camera. Yes. <laughs> whether we like it or not, it's not a question of if there will be terror attacks. It's a question of when. Because all the enabling environment is there. The security agencies are struggling. Mm. There are too many people that believe in this ideology. Mm. You know, and that's why I feel it's not just a matter of if it will happen, it will be a matter of when it happens. So, it, and what we don't need is just a knee jerk reaction. What is our strategy to counter ideology yeah. yes. on a global level, mm. on a regional level, on a community level? What do we share with individual communities that are closed in their silos, the different groupings? What do you share, even as an individual or as a small family? How do I educate my children? What do we do? 
Recently, this has been happening for about a year now. The Lord led me to just pray when I'm on the tube. And he also led me to like share with people out there. If you're interested, maybe you can get in touch with us. We want to bathe the network with prayers from the underground to the overground to the heavenlies. When you're going to walk, when you're coming back, it might be five minutes. Yeah. Just stand there and under your breath, pray for protection. And that's you know? something that everybody can do. This is a practical mm -hmm. measure that everybody can do. We'd love to hear from you. Please get in touch so that we can have a coordinated effort. But even if you felt that you weren't able to do that, just from hearing what we've said, that's something that every genuine believing Christian can do. Just in your, in your quiet time, on your way to work or whatever it is you're doing, commit everybody in prayer, you know, and say, Lord, protect us as we travel. And sometimes I tend to think that Christians, we can, we can worry about ourselves, our families, our church brethren, and that's it. But if a bomb goes off on the circle line, in a station and you're on it, it's gonna be you and everybody else. So why, why not extend these prayers to everybody around and say, cover us and protect us? Also, living in a place like London until recently, we did not really embrace the reality that terror is a global issue. I used to share in church and a few people would say, well, it's not relevant. It is very relevant. It's very relevant. I tell you in the last couple of days, probably more people have been killed in places like Nigeria than even in Brussels this morning. Wow. You know, there are terror attacks going on, but because it's somewhere in West Africa, we don't talk about it much. Mm. And I think the way we talk about terror also has to change. Yes. A soul that has been lost, a community that has been affected, whether in the Middle East mm -hmm. or in West Africa or in a developing or so-called developing country or a city mm -hmm. like, like um, London. It's the same thing. Yes. And we should value lives and we should pray globally. And we should also start praying for global leaders and our regional leaders to be able to be bold enough to come up with strategies because there's a place for prayers. And like you said earlier on, but beyond prayers, we also need to become very proactive mm -hmm. with practical solutions, social solutions. You know, they're exploiting, for example, the poverty level. Mm -hmm. They're exploiting the fact that some people seem to be getting the best while others are victims of some economic policies. Mm. How can we alleviate poverty? Mm. How can we take these people by encouraging them to drop the weapons and pick up something constructive? I, I know someone who is doing exactly that in northern Nigeria who goes in and he builds computer schools in these areas. That is incredible, you know. It is incredible. And can I just ask you, um, what do you think the average person who's sitting at home, say in the UK or in um, a developed country and thinks that it's far away or we just pray that it won't happen to my country. You know, we've, we've both said today that we think it's quite relevant for people that are making decisions which affect us all to be lifted up in prayer mm -hmm. or to have, you know, the, the movement of God behind them so that they can make decisions that, that assist the country especially in critical times. But what do you think about the average person who's thinking, well, politics isn't for me, it's not something I can get involved in, it's not, you know, it's, you know, stuff in the community is not something that I really want to get involved in. I just want to go to church, read my Bible and come home and pray. What would you say to that, that kind of person when we're discussing issues such as terror and things that could affect us? If you've ever been a victim of anything traumatic at all, people who have lost their children to gun crime mm. or to some mismanagement in health services, they start a charity right. and they start caring. One of the things we need to do is to start caring for the victims. It's, I discovered that it's so, such a powerful thing. When those that want to destroy have such a strong passion, their passion must not override those of us that are passionate about those that want to build. Mm. So some people are breaking down, we are building. So one of the ways we can respond is to find your voice and change the narrative about terror. Yeah. And you can do that in a creative way. I know of a 12 year old girl who heard about all the terror attacks in Nigeria. And she was like, I wanna make a difference. I'm not gonna speak for 24 hours. And the girl tapes up her mouth, 12 year old. So she covered her mouth with, with, with some with kind tape. of tape. Mask and tape. she wouldn't speak for 24 hours. She wouldn't eat, she wouldn't drink. And she went to church the next day and they know her to be a girl that speaks and she's talkative. All of a sudden, everyone gathered. Why are you not speaking? Why do you have a tape on your mouth? And she removes the tape and says, I want to be a voice for the voiceless. I want to help the victims of terror. I want to help them. And people were so moved. 
They emptied their pockets. He raised hundreds of pounds and flew over to, to Nigeria, giving money and aid and toys and clothes to victims of terror. Yeah. Everyone can do something. Absolutely. You can pick up your pen and start writing creatively. You can get a microphone and sing. I know of a jazz musician who has produced music that the proceeds from that music goes to victims of terror. Mm -hmm. I know of a dance group, and I've brought that to us on this show before, where what they are doing is using dance as an instrument of social reformation. That is why we started the Love Back Project, where we are looking at celebrating not what the terrorists are doing, but celebrating what people are doing to build back communities. Yeah. One of the things we can do is build back communities. I agree. Love that young person who is a victim of, of the ideology. Go into the prison and share. Love someone. Build. Counter hatred with love. Be, be, be creative. There are other ways. I know someone who paints pictures and paintings, and people look at those paintings and they ask questions. I know of someone who made T-shirts and put on it love back. And people ask, what is that about? I'm talking about myself. Ah, uh, <laughs> he know? knows of himself. You know? <laughs> and people ask me when I'm out with the love back t-shirt, what is that about? And I say, well, we want to change the ideology where we respond to terror with, with love because yeah. love is more violent than terror. We're going to take a break. See you on the other side of this. And the talks ahead seems bigger than you. That's where he steps in.
welcome back. Welcome to Riot. Welcome to Radical Impartation of Truth. We have been talking about terror, but we have also been talking about the solution. If you have any ideas, you can send us a text, email us. We're looking at how you can even begin to call in, by God's grace, pretty soon you are going to be able to call in live, and we're going to be able to bring this show to you live. So watch this space. We're rejigging things as we move this show forward. But let's move away from just talking about terror. Let's talk about one of the greatest victims of terror and how he dealt with it, Jesus Christ. Right, you know? that's a good segue. You know? I really enjoyed <laughs> that. <laughs> that's exactly, he was a victim of terror, but he did not fight back with hatred. That's right. He fought back by releasing himself. And in dying, he broke the stronghold of fear and death. The sting of death was conquered. And that's the whole thing. Many times the enemy brings alternative that makes us lose the essence. It's a distraction. Isn't it's it? a distraction, yeah. is it? Christ gave his life. And this is the judgment that light came into the world, but men preferred darkness. Mm. We celebrate Christ during Easter. And so let's talk quickly about Easter. Anything coming? What's happening? Well, there's a lot going on at Easter. I mean, look for a church near you. If you're not going to an Easter program, you should be. <laughs> we say that here because as, as um, you know, Pastor Fred has said, it's the ultimate sacrifice. But we've also um, discussed on Christian Weekly News a film that's coming out. In fact, it's actually out. It's called Risen, and it's really good. It's really, really good. It's got some really stellar actors in it. Uh, Joseph Fiennes from the, the, the Fiennes family, brother of Ralph Fiennes, and Peter Firth. I think people would recognise Peter Firth from Snoops, if you ever used to watch that on BBC One, and other programmes. So it's got some, got some good actors in it. It's a really good Christian film. And I do use the word Christian because quite a lot of the the text in the film is actually taken directly from the Bible. So that's, that's really interesting because now we have a trend of faith-based movies. I know we've got God's Not Dead 2 coming out yeah. um, uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks. In the States, there's um, Believe in Miracles coming out. Uh, that, that's already out and that's supposed to be very good, starring Jennifer Gardner. So we have a, a, a good trend, a healthy trend for faith-based movies, but Risen is really good because you will recognize as a Christian a lot of the text that you're hearing in the film because you will have read it in your Bible. But what's so great about it is that it's cast from the eyes of a non-believer. So a Roman soldier is charged with finding the body of Jesus. Now, as Christians, we all know what happened uh, in terms of that the body could not be found. But as a Roman soldier in those times, the story moves quite nicely about how he came to the re realization. Well, you don't want to give it away. I'm not giving any spoilers <laughs> away, I promise, I promise. I mean, we know that, any Christian knows that. Yeah, people but who are, only people who are not watch. People who are non-Christians know the story uh, that, Christ, sure? that Christ rose from the dead. But I could never, but that's, 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 that's not a spoiler. That's, that's not the heart of the story at all. The heart of the story is the journey that this man went through. Mm. That's really what it's mm. all about. Um, but it's, it's really good. Go and check it out and support Christian movies. I mean, it, takes, it really does take something to, for a director, a producer, the actors to say, right, we're going to make a movie in this day and age which is based on biblical text and Christian values. It takes a lot because we know that, you know, Christian... Um, Things have Music, changed, et cetera, Things have are changed often about, under attack. About Christian yeah. Yeah. movies. Things have changed. They used to call it the ghetto of, 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 of movies before, but right now you have very good movies being made, mm. you know, and they're they are becoming top 10, you uh, know. Well, they're going to, the war room box in the office. States what was, 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 was room, number one. War room was awesome. That broke box office records. You know, so, and guess yeah. what? We might be bringing to you also some of the stars. We'll get to interview them. Uh, on, on at least for sure, God's not dead. Uh, for for example, ben, Benjamin Ocheng. Okay. We, we, we're having him here in London, and um, I was in his house in in LA. Ooh. Awesome, awesome guy, down to earth, you know. And get faster. I was I've in his been house told, in LA. Yeah, you know, being around, you know. <laughs> um, and we'll be having him on the show. Definitely, we'll try. We'll try to get him to give a shout out. But uh, watch this space. Audience of one is coming up. Audience of One is going to be awesome. Hello there, my name is Evan Sogboy and we have here... I'm Anu Omide. Together we'll be worshipping the Lord at this awesome event tagged the Audience of One. You don't want to miss it. Happening live here at the Icon Tower Studio. Join us, I'll be here worshipping with the uh, amazing Reaper's Choir. Reaper's Choir will be here. Yeah, yeah, and all the anointed artists as well. Join us as we worship. 